it is my great pleasure to invite our dear visiting Khatib, no stranger to us here at San Fernando, Maulana Kabir Muhammad, to deliver today's khutbah and lead us in the Juma Salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Was salatu was salamu ala sayyidil mursalin. Wa qad qala Allah tabarak wa ta'ala fil Qur'an al-Majid wal Furqan al-Hamid. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. إن الله وملائكته يسالون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله صلوات الله وملائكته وأنبيائه ورسوله وحملة يارشه وجميع خلقه على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد respected أستاذ مولانا سيدك أحمد ناصر أو العلماء brothers and sisters in Islam as you all are aware we are in the month of Ramadan and in this month of Ramadan Allah سبحانه وتعالى has blessed us immensely in Islam, we have certain places and certain times where there's a lot of barakah, a lot of blessings, right? Certain times, like on a Friday, there's a certain hour on Friday where dua is accepted. Some of the ulama believe that when the imam is sitting between the two khutbahs, when the imam sits on the member, they believe at that point in time, dua is accepted. Some say, no, it's not that time, it's actually around Asr Salat, right? Around Asr Namaz time. So there's a particular hour on Friday that dua is accepted. We know that there are special nights that our duas are accepted and we could gain more blessings on certain nights, like the night of Shabi Barat, which went about two weeks ago, or the nights of Eid, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Unfortunately, most people don't observe these two nights though. Eid al-Fitr night, how much people have seen in Masjid observing Eid al-Fitr night? We, we do Laylatul Qad night, which we think is the 27th night, right? But the night that we know for sure, Eid night, we're not in the masjid. We're not observing that night, and we know that is a night for sure. That is a night you get extra blessings, right? There's a night du'as are accepted, etc. Any one of the two Eids, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Then we know that there are certain days where there's a lot of blessings, like the 10 days of Zulhijjah. Immense blessings. But unlike Ramadan, in Ramadan, every moment, every moment, every second, there's blessings to get. Every moment, there's forgiveness to get or to receive. Every moment, there's kurba, there's nearness to receive, to become nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no other month like this in the year. There's no other time like this in the year. How many, of actually, how many of us actually make use of this month? Well, as we know the ayat, and everybody know the ayat, we hear the ayat year after year. What's the ayat? Everybody, if I say what the ayat, everybody know the ayat. Oh, you who believe. Everybody could finish it. Fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, so that you may become God-fearing. Everybody knows this ayat. How do you become God-fearing though? You're fasting. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, you're fasting. But are you aware that there are people who are fasting and still they are not praying? They fast for the month of Ramadan, but they don't perform salah. How do you attain, how do you wish to attain this top water? By only, by only fasting alone? One of the things I've noticed in our community is that we say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But we really don't understand what it means to say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. It's a contract, you know. When you say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, you agree now to follow all the commandments. You agree to live your life according to Islamic law. 
Then when you say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, you don't say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and don't pray. Or say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and don't fast. Or La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and don't pay zakat. Or La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and don't go to Hajj. It doesn't work like that. If you are saying La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, you have to strive. And how many of us are striving? How many of us are performing salah? How many of us are fasting? Every year we like to live in a fallacy where we believe everybody fasting. But we know it's not, it's not true. But no khatib in the right mind will come on the member and say that. Right? But it's a fallacy because we tend to think everybody is fasting. But we know for a fact that is not the case. There are many people that we know in our own families who are not fasting. And if you say to them, why are you not fasting? They give you a flimsy excuse. They have some of the worst excuse they have, not to fast. But do they know the reward for each moment, for each blessing that you get in this Ramadan? When you look at Christians, when Christmas, Christmas time coming, Christmas time will start from November, right? From November it start. Right? You feel the Christmas spirit. You hear people saying that, feeling the Christmas spirit. Anywhere you go, you hear Christmas songs. All the stores dress up in Christmas decorations. Everybody has Christmas deals and Christmas specials. When Ramadan time comes, people will say, well, I'm feeling the Ramadan spirit. How are you going to feel the Ramadan spirit? You know one of the ways our speeches doesn't, doesn't have effect? One way that our speech doesn't have effect, or one of the reasons why our speeches don't have effect, if the scholars who are giving lectures do not practice what they preach on, it will never have effect. Whatever they say will never find its way in people's hearts. So you can't stand up and tell people, read Salah five times a day, and you as a mullah, and I can't get it for Fajr. It doesn't make sense. It wouldn't have the effect. When we talk about the Ramadan spirit, how many of us know the reward for this just one minute in Ramadan, one second in Ramadan, for one deed in Ramadan? You come in the masjid here today. What's the blessings for coming here today? You go to make Hajj. Right? Or you go to make Umrah and you read one salah in Masjid Haram. How much reward is one salah there? I know watching Haji Wahid there. <laughs> one salah there, 100,000. One salah in Masjid Haram is 100,000 salah anywhere else in the world. 100,000 salah anywhere else in the world. You know how much days is that? Like 20,000 days, right? Just imagine you come into this Masjid for 20,000 days. I read in five times salat. That's about 54 years or 57 years. 57 years, five times a day. Come in here to read Salat, and you could get that in one Salat in the Haram. Right? One Salat in the Haram. Or we'll go to Masjid al Nabawi, Prophet Salah al Masjid. How much reward do you get for one Salat in Prophet Salah al Masjid? According to some hadith, 1,000. According to other hadith, 10,000. So just think about it, 10,000 divided by five. How much days? 200 days? Yeah? I ain't too good at maths, eh? Think about it. Mashul Aqsa. One salah in Mashul Aqsa is 500 salah anywhere else in the world. One salah in Mashul Aqsa is 500 salah anywhere else in the world. Imagine reading one salah there, you're reading 100, 100 days salah here in this masjid. What about your deeds now in Ramadan? How Allah is merciful and how Allah multiplies. In the hadith that we find in the Sahih Imam Muslim, one deed could be multiplied up to 10 or 700 times. One deed, either by 10 or 700 times, and that is not for fasting itself. That is not the reward for fasting in Ramadan. That is just for one deed in the month of Ramadan. One deed that you could do in one second. People say, Molana, all let us sleep and eat. All let us sleep all day and eat halwa. And you know that one? Then Molana, they sleep all day and eat halwa. They don't know about exerting themselves. They don't know about working at eight to four. What them know about that? Them fellas, you know, they don't just sit down and read book all day. So they can't understand what we, the normal people, is feel. All day, Ramadan, we have to go to work like normal people, working eight to four. Some of us have manual jobs, right? It's real pressure. And all they will come there Friday and talk about getting blessings. All you know what we had to go through. This is how people talk to us, I know. 
You know what we decided to go through? Well, what we go get blessings? All the sleeping holy, all the could get up and read Salat five times, all the could do that. We can't do that. But you know, for each moment, you could get blessings with the correct intention. You started the intention by just saying Bismillah. You start your car just saying Bismillah to go to work. You get blessings until you reach your work. Once you're there in work, you just say Subhanallah. You got a few seconds, Subhanallah. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. This is not taking anything out of you. You don't have to be a Maulana to do that. You don't have to get a Maulana job to do that. You could do that anytime. You could make a dua just by yourself. Allahumma kfirli, oh Allah forgive me. Allahumma rahamni, oh Allah have mercy on me. That doesn't take anything out of you. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shortest durood it have. Sallallahu ala Muhammad. Right, this is the shortest durood. But out of the respect for Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we add the Sayyidina. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. But if you want to say Sallallahu ala Muhammad, that, that will work as well. You get the rewards for that. How much you getting out of this month of Ramadan? You say, oh God, Mawlana Sab, whole day we're working by. We can't come in the mosque for Tarawi. It's hard to pray Tarawi in the night. We're tired. Obviously you're tired. You must be tired. And then when you come in the mosque, you just say, oh, one hour and a half. Some must should read in Asia in 20 minutes. Asia Salat, Farad alone, it's 20 minutes. Farad alone. Yeah. You can't do people that, man. You have to have understanding. The people come in, they're making a sacrifice to be in the masjid. They come to read Salat. And you want to read Asia for 20 minutes? Farad alone? No. Have understanding, have mercy on people. Our religion is not a hard religion to follow, you know. It's, it's unfortunately, the people leading the religion making it hard. Very difficult. If you cannot come in the masjid to read Tarawi, read Tarawi home. Oh God, when me and Osama Surahs will read a class 20 times. Read, do something. Don't let the man go. And you ain't pray Tarawi Salat. Even if you have to pray alone by yourself in your house, do it. Because Ramadan time is not only reward in the day, you know, partner. Reward in the night too. Every moment is reward. Don't waste it. How many of us waste Ramadan? Year after year we waste it. And what we waste it on? This thing. Somebody else to fling this thing away. Right? People don't understand how this is a burden on, on you. Whole day, every day somebody calling you, somebody messaging you, somebody have a problem. If you take on this whole day, you can't do nothing about that, you know. You can't do anything. Everything that could distract you, you will do it in Ramadan. Things that shall have no interest to you whole year, you will find it being interesting in Ramadan. None of us watch Food Channel. And you have a channel called Food Channel, right? None of us would watch Food Channel, but we waste time. We don't know which second or which moment we could actually ask Allah for something in Ramadan and it will be accepted, it will be granted to us. So why waste it? There's a lot of ahadith I wanted to read to you all. And a lot of ayat. So just for the sake of it, we read two hadiths, inshallah, who are the and one of the ayat. In Ramadan, we exercise a lot of what? Patience, right? Everybody knows the word patience. Sabr, right? What is the reward for being patient? Or what the Quran says about being patient? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as sabrun jamilun. Patience is beautiful. Patience is beautiful. And in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, As-sabrun diya'un. Sabr is a diya. What is a diya? It's a light. Patience is a light. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Zumar, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Inna ma yuwafa sabiruna ajrahum bi gayri hisab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Indeed, the patient will be given their reward without account. Just now we check 700, we check by 10, we check by 700. But Allah is saying about those who are patient, they are given reward without account. We don't know how much reward you will get by being patient, by exercising patience. So there's two hadith, inshallah, who are I will just read these two. And we get some wisdom from our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the way, before we go to that, you all know the hadith about each letter in the Quran is 10, 10 blessings. 
How much letters in the Quran? There's over 300 and something thousand letters altogether. Multiply that by 10 or multiply that by 700. And then again, you can say, but we don't have time to sell and read Quran like you all day, right? Not you, right? So what do you do? What Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say equal to one third of the Quran? Surah class. And if you read Surah class three times, you get what? Reward of whole Quran. So look, this hadith is from Abu Sayyid al Qudri radiallahu ta'ala. He said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, on the first night of Ramadan, the doors of the sky are open, and none of them will be shut until the last night of Ramadan. There will be no believing slave who prays during one of its nights, except that Allah writes for him 1,500 rewards. Just, just read back that part. There will be no believing slave who prays during one of its nights, except that Allah writes for him 1,500 rewards. With every prostration, so it's for every sajda, he will build for him a home of rubies in the garden that will have 60,000 doors, each leading to a golden palace crafted with rubies. When he fasts the first day of Ramadan, he would have been forgiven all his sins committed up to that day. And whoever witnesses the month of Ramadan, 70,000 angels will seek forgiveness for him every day and from the morning prayer until the veil disappears. For every prostration he prostrates in the month of Ramadan, during the night or day, he will have a tree planted for him. A rider could ride for 500 years in its shade. Right? For every such that you do, you have a tree planted for you in paradise. And you have a, there's some hadith here that I would like to read, but it's lengthy, so I wouldn't be able to read that one. The last hadith. It was reported on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ascended the mimbar and he said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. It was said to him, O Messenger of Allah, why did you do that? And he said, O Jibrail, upon whom be peace, abase it be the nose of the slave who when Ramadan enters is not forgiven. I wouldn't read out the whole hadith. But what he says here about those who Ramadan enters upon them, meaning they witness the month of Ramadan and they are not forgiven. Let's hope and pray, inshallah, for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah forgives each and every one of us from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that Allah has mercy on each and every one of us, and that this Ramadan may be the best Ramadan for all of us, inshallah. Some advice for those of you who are struggling, who find it difficult to fast who may have never fasted before. Try, try, try at least one day, right? If you're not in the habit of reading Tarawi, Salat, etc., try to attend at least one night. And if you can't go in the masjid, do it home. But do not give up. One of the things that we don't take in consideration is people's mental state. A lot of people are, because our culture is uh, this macho man type of culture we have. This is not correct. We don't know people's mental condition. And sometimes a person may not be fasting because of their mental state. And when we stand in front of the people and we lambast them for not fasting, we drive them away from fasting. So we're not supposed to lambast anybody or criticize anybody. We're supposed to welcome people. And know that some people need more encouragement than others. Because at the end of the day, what Allah says to us in the Quran, mu'minuna ikwa. Indeed, the believers are brothers to one another. And as brothers and sisters, we should encourage one another to do as much good as possible. Inshallah, who are you,
الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل يوم الجمعة سيد الأيام ولا نعبد ولا نستعين إلا إياه والذي فرر صلاة يوم الجمعة بقوله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نري الصلاة من يوم الجمعة فسوي الله ذكر الله وزر البيع والصلاة على سيد الأنام حجر مولانا محمد مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أفضل البشر بعد الأنبياء بتخيك عمي المؤمنين أبي بخر الصديق وعلى ناتك بالصدق والصواب عمي المؤمنين عمر بن الخطاب وعلى خميل الحياء والإيمان عمي المؤمنين عثمان بن يافان وعلى سيد الله غالب عمي المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب وعلى إمام مين هما مين سائدين شهيدين أبي محمد الحسن وأبي عبد الله الحسين وعلى أمهما سيدة النساء فاطمة زهراء وعلى مه شريفين متحرين من أدناس حمزة العباس وعلى ستة الباكة من أشارة المباشرة والسائري والصحابة والتابعين ردوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل الله فلا هادي الله ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى ملائكه المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى اعلى وعلى وعز وجل تم وهم اكبر اقيموا الصلاه Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Ad-Din Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhina Namta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما دراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر فننزل الملائكة وروه فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر Allahu Akbar Sami Allahu liman hamida Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar 
Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Malik Yawm Ad-Din. Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim. Sirat Al-Ladhin An'amta Alayhim. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين كل عوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنات والناس الله أكبر Semiyallahu liman hamidah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النور الأنوار وسر الأسرار وسيد الأبرار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وخينا عذاب النار اللهم في الأمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم انصر أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم فاز أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا اللهم إننا نسلك الجنة اللهم إننا نسلك الجنة اللهم إننا نسلك الجنة اللهم جنة من النار اللهم جنة من النار اللهم جنة من النار يا الله يا رب العالمين يف Shifa to all Oilen members of our community, Ya Rabbul Alameen, to all Muslim men, Muslim women, Mu'min, Muslim, believing men, believing women, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to grant Shifa, especially to our Imam Maulana Najib Hussein, and grant him swift recovery, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Salawatullahi wa malaikatihi wa anbiya'ihi wa rasulihi wa hamalati arashihi wa jamil khalkihi ala Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.